What's going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle coming to you with Week 15 Tight Ends, our start and sit show for the week. Now, I have a quick bullet point before we get moving forward anymore, and I just want to let you know that we're changing it up just a little bit for this week. I saw some comments last week that led me to believe that there may have been some people who watched only the ranking show and disregarded the start and sit show, or watch the rankings video, but only watch bits and pieces of the start and sit show. Now, keep in mind on this show here, when we talk about start and sits, this is where we break down more of the matchup itself, more information on the players, and then the ranking shows a little bit quicker. I'm going to switch it around this week. I'm going to make this show really quick. I'm just going to touch on some brief bullet points, going to talk about some feelings I have about the game, some observations, and then for my ranking episode I'll switch it up a little bit because I think there may have been some confusion last week because with my rankings I typically rank based on upside and if you don't watch both of these episodes in conjunction to help you make decisions you might miss out on some really valuable information that would lead you to believe even though I think the upside of one guy is a little bit better the floor of another guy is a lot safer and that might lead you to put him in on your team instead so hopefully making that switch this week it will help with some of your decisions for week 15. Now, we also need to be as transparent as possible, possible, which we are every single week. Talking about tight ends last week, 59%. I would much rather be up in the 60%. Yes, 100%. I had a couple of misses that I thought were locks. Jack Doyle being one of them, he didn't end up doing anything. And then obviously, Jared Cook had himself a huge game, even though he had two catches, two touchdowns, a real big game. Ben Watson, of course, as you see there, he was a hit last week, even though I talked about him a little bit. So let's get back into the groove of things. Definitely to be back up over 60%. Heck, two weeks ago, I was at 76%. So a little bit of a drop off there, but feeling good about this week. Got a lot of good information. Let's jump into it, and we'll talk about our our tight ends for week 15. All right, for the Thursday night matchup, the Jets and the Ravens, we have to keep an eye on Andrews at this point. If he ends up playing, how limited would he potentially be? We're going to have to keep an eye on that up until game time and see what ends up happening with him. If he's in, I'm going to run with him. And if he's not, I'm going to run with Hayden Hurst. Because as I've said on basically every show for the past several weeks, what feels like 15 weeks at this point, The top target for Lamar Jackson is the tight end position. Andrews has been that guy. He has a chance to score every single week. And if it's not Andrews this week, I will still trust in Hurst to potentially find the end zone. Remember, Lamar Jackson might be a little bit banged up. He might not be running around this week nearly as much as he has in the past. So we might be seeing a little bit more passing than we have. The tight end position continues to be number one. Griffin from the Jets, he is already out this week. The two guys filling in from Daniel Brown and Trayvon Wesco. Not going to start either of those guys. Haven't seen any of them. Don't really want to trust them, especially on Thursday night against the Baltimore Ravens. Four tight ends and four sits in this matchup here. New England headed into Cincinnati. Not really trusting, again, Ben Watson or Matt Lacoste. He's been on the field quite a bit as well, so I'm going to list them both as sits this week. CJ, who's your mama? Another guy that you might want to put out there because he's been getting some looks from Andy Dalton since he's been added back. Not nearly enough upside against the Patriots, though, and Tyler Eifert has been a disappointment for a lot of people who thought he might be at least a touchdown play or touchdown dependent play a lot of weeks this week. He hasn't been. None of these guys offer any upside this week. We're going to skip on all four of them. No Mike Evans means somebody's going to get some trust in the red zone and in the end zone this week. And we have to look at our boy Cameron Bray, a guy that Jameis Winston absolutely loves and look towards quite often. I've seen a lot of rumblings about OJ Howard and with no Mike Evans, is Howard going to end up being the guy? I'm just not going to trust it this week. I'm not going to roll with it. I have to see it first. If you're in the playoffs right now, are you really going to trust your matchup on OJ Howard? At least we've seen something from Cameron Bray, not only this year, but in years past in terms of his connection with Jameis Winston. So definitely a red zone threat for us this week. On the other side of the ball with Logan Thomas, not going to be trusting in him either. Again, TJ Hawkinson didn't do anything. We're not going to trust Thomas to do anything either. It's going to be a cold one in Green Bay this weekend. On Sunday, the kickoff is expected to be below 10. Not really going to be interested in any of the passing options really in this game. I think we're going to see a lot of of running the ball on the ground. In terms of the tight end position, we could see some upside at wide receiver. But in terms of tight end, 
Don't see anything this week. Jimmy Graham has been a disappointment really all season outside of a couple of games. And for the Chicago Bears tight ends, Trey Burton, he's been moved to the IR obviously a few weeks back. Since then, it's been a jumble of guys back and forth. Nobody at the position has had any fantasy value yet this year. Over the last four weeks, the tight end position has troubled both of these teams. Houston is giving up the second most fantasy points to uh, opposing tight ends the last four weeks. And the Tennessee Titans are giving up the fifth most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends this week. So for Janu Smith, definitely going to be running with him. A great connection with Ryan Tannehill so far. And for Darren Fells, I'm going to pick him over Jordan Aikens this week. Fells is the guy who has been the touchdown play all season long. The red zone threat all season long. Aikens had a better game than he did last week. However, if I had to put my money on somebody, I'm going to put it on Darren Fells this week to at least score a touchdown. Aikens might get a little bit more volume. It's been that way in the past, but Fells is your touchdown guy. And at the tight end position, for them to be a tight end one, if they score, they're going to be up there that week. Travis Kelsey, of course, if we own him, he's going to be in our lineup. You don't sit Travis Kelsey during the playoffs or any week for that matter. However, for the Denver Broncos, not a whole lot of upside at the position this week. Noah Fant had a foot injury last week, had a nice game before the foot injury. Is he going to be back this week? Even if he is, it could end up being limited. Now, this is a really good matchup against KC, who has had trouble starting the tight or playing against tight ends this year. I would love to start Noah Fant this week. However, I can't do it. Not with that foot injury. Might be limited in some capacity. And the guy that filled in last week, Jeff Heuerman, not going to not gonna pounce on him and try to put him in my lineup either. Even though, again, it's a good matchup. I can't trust either of these guys this week. I told you, Headliner Nation. I said last week when I listed Mike Giusecki as a start, he was going to suck. It's happened every single time this year. If I list him as a start, he doesn't do anything. If I list him as a sit, the dude scores a touchdown. I will take him to score a touchdown this week. Zach Ertz shredded the New York Giants last week, especially in the fourth quarter and overtime. Look for Jaseki to get a little bit of work this week. As far as Evan Ingram goes, if he plays this week, I'll put him in my lineup. I don't mind trying to run him out there against the Dolphins if he is out there and healthy. If he's not, though, Caden Smith has been the guy so far. However, However, he hasn't done a whole lot of anything, so for him, I will go ahead and move him to the bench. Not going to try and get cute with that. If you own Zach Ertz and you own Dallas Goddard, both of them are in your lineups this week. Why? Because who in the heck does Carson Wentz have to throw to besides those two guys? So many injuries for the Philadelphia Eagles right now. The top receiving threats are going to be these two guys, Ertz and Goddard. They're going to be running a ton of two tight end sets. Heck, even last week, they had three tight ends on the field quite a bit because they had so many injuries at wide receiver. So expect a lot of the same this week. This is not a matchup that worries me in terms of oh if Ertz is the only target they're going to try to take him away it's the Washington Redskins they've been decent at times this year but I'm not going to try and bet on them to stop Ertz and Goddard with Wentz behind them they're just not a good enough defense to do that and on the other side of the ball with Jeremy Sprinkle again a guy that hasn't done anything this year he's not a streaming option in week 14 15 Seattle is giving up the second most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends right now. So, of course, I want to try and exploit this matchup this week. If Greg Olson does end up playing, then I'm going to have him in my lineup. But if he doesn't play, then it's Ian Thomas this week. He was not that bad last week. He had a decent week last week. And in this matchup with so much upside, though, I have no problem putting him in my lineup and being 100% committed to him having a decent week. On the other side of it, though, Jacob Hollister, I want to play Jacob Hollister. I'm rooting for Hollister to have a good game. However, the guy hasn't had double-digit points in quite some time. It's been several weeks since he's been fantasy viable. He just hasn't done good enough for us this week, getting again getting against the Carolina Panthers, who have been pretty good against stopping tight ends this year. Not going to trust it this week. I'm going to go ahead and sit him and try to look elsewhere for some more upside. Darren Waller, I think he's been a sit for me every single week this year. The upside is just too great with him week in and week out. Even in a matchup where David Carr... Hint will end up being a sit for me. Darren Waller will still be a guy that I will start. And on the other side of the ball with the Jacksonville tight ends, again, it's been a mess at that position this year. A lot of injuries. Nobody at that position has been start worthy so far this season. So we're not going to start trying to put him in our lineup now. All right, give me some David Njoku this week. Obviously, Vance McDonald didn't end up being anything last week, but remember, he did end up leaving the game with a concussion as well, so he lost out on some time. 
to potentially put up some decent numbers. David Njoku, I'll go with him this week because outside of two, maybe three matchups, depending on how you want to look at the points, Arizona's given up a lot of fancy points to the tight end position this year. Every single week, a guy has had touchdown upside, at least with decent volume upside as well. So David Njoku... I'll roll with him this week. There seems to be a little bit of friction with OBJ, Baker Mayfield, and the Browns right now. So is Baker Mayfield maybe not looking his way nearly as much? If that happens, he could be looking a little bit more towards David Njoku and could get him into the end zone this week. And on the other side with Charles Clay, finally gets in the end zone last week, but he's not going to be a start for me still this week, no matter how good the matchup is. My man Hunter Henry found the end zone for you last week. He was a start and he played well. We're going to go ahead and roll with him again this week. Phillip Rivers obviously took something before the game last week because he was hyped up, ready to roll, and had a decent game. We'll see if he can get Hunter Henry in the end zone again this week. With Kyle Rudolph, he's a start for me every single week as long as Adam Thielen isn't playing. Now, he didn't have a great game last week, 100%, but he bounces back this week. Remember, this is a guy that has six touchdowns in his last seven games. He's a red zone threat for you. As far as Irv Smith Jr. goes, they continue to use him. He's running some routes, but he's not getting any volume. He's not getting any looks, really, no targets. So he might be a guy out there blocking and decoying a little bit, but he's not really putting up any fantasy viable numbers. Tyler Higby for you has been a very solid replacement, and Dallas has struggled against the tight end this season. So once again, Tyler Higby is in the start column this week. You're going to roll with him just like you have the last couple of weeks. For Jason Witten and Blake Jarwin, though, not really interested in either of those guys. Blake Jarwin saw a little bit of volume last week. Jason Witten, he's a guy that's got to score. Jason Witten has to find the end zone to be a start for us. Yes, he is a tight end one. Yes, he's done very well this season. However, in this matchup, I'm not feeling it. Not feeling that this week, looking more towards some of the wide receivers and especially the run game. Maybe Jarwin gets a little bit of volume. Maybe Witten finds the end zone. I just don't want to bet on it here in the semifinals of your playoffs. Austin Hooper wasn't great in his return last week, but Calvin Ridley being done for the season means Austin Hooper is going to have to step in and take a lot of that void and get some of that volume back that he's missed since he's been injured. Definitely seeing it this week, even though San Francisco has been really good against tight ends. Yes, gave up two touchdowns last week to Jared Cook, but those were the only two receptions Cook had. Josh Hill ended up having a touchdown as well. So it was a lot of touchdowns that really propelled that value against the San Francisco 49ers last week. So Austin Hooper, a lot of volume, touchdown upside. And then with George Kittle, we're not setting George Kittle. We still don't know a whole lot about Vance McDonald in the concussion protocol. Nothing has been announced for this coming Sunday yet. So we're not going to end up even considering him with how bad he's been. And they get the Buffalo Bills, who have been really good against tight end. So Nick Vanette, who would end up being his replacement, we're not concerned with him either. And as far as Dawson Knox goes, we're not going to trust him on the road against Pittsburgh. The guy's been hit or miss. Yeah, he could score a touchdown. He's had a couple of volume games, but nothing has came to fruition with him. And Cole Beasley has been so good that Cole Beasley has really been that second target behind John Brown. And then outside of that, it's been the running backs. Ladies and gentlemen, you might have screwed us last week, but we are going back to Jack Mother and Doyle this week, 100%, going up against the Saints, who have given up four tight end one finishes the last four weeks. Tight ends doing very well against the Saints recently. We are 100% rolling with Jack Doyle this week. Jared Cook. Now, if Jared Cook ends up playing this week and is out of the concussion protocol, yes, I will get him back into my lineup. He's been far too good in the second half of the season to sit him. Even though I had him as a sit last week, I had some very good stats to back that up because San Francisco had been so good. Didn't work out that way. Not going that route this week. Going to get him back into the lineup. Now, if he doesn't play, some of you might be thinking, "Mm, what about Josh Hill? No, don't go for Josh Hill this week. Taysom Hill was on the field quite a bit last week at the tight end position. The do-it-all player for the New Orleans Saints. You could see a lot of him at that position this week. Hill would not be a viable option for us. There you have it, Headliner Nation. There are your tight ends. Start and sit for week 15 of the NFL season. Don't forget, though, watch this video in conjunction with my tight end rankings that come out later in the week. That's really going to give you a good idea on where I see a lot of upside, where I see some downside, and why I might have some guys ranked a little bit differently because of the upside that they carry into week 15. So again, these episodes are really good for you if you watch them in conjunction. However, if you're new here to Headliner Nation, make sure you hit that subscribe button, become a 
yourself a part of Headliner Nation today. And if you do, let us know in the comments below so we can give you a welcome and Headliner Nation can welcome you as well. Don't forget to hit the like button. Leave any comments below with any questions that you might have. Turn on the bell notifications so anytime we go live or drop content, you will know about it. Don't leave, ladies and gentlemen. Even if this is your last week playing fantasy football, don't leave because we're going to be doing stuff all off-season long. You're not going to want to miss it. Hang out and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll catch you on the next episode. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later.